have great guests today, a, a high-level ITF player by the name of a Jakey Jake, Jake Kroger. And Jake is ranked 170 in the world. And today we're talking about a detail how to succeed on ITF Junior Circuit, which is stand for International Tennis Federation Juniors. Jake, we, we uh, cover a few aspects of the game, personal life. Let's go into college tennis. Um, I know you have been selected among the best. You've been selected to go to Duke University, which is a very famous school. Um, Jake, how, how you got to Duke? Because I know your mom went to Notre Dame, your dad went to Notre Dame. Let's start with uh, the process of going to Duke first. Yeah, so right from the get-go, I have to thank, you know, just all my family members because especially my parents and, and you know, my grandfather, I was never pressured into making any decision that wasn't solely, uh, solely mine. But in terms of the recruiting, I started around last year, last summer, and um, that's really when I, I kind of realized that all, all the sacrifices and everything I've made to become the tennis player I am have started to pay off. Um, and it was really actually quite overwhelming at first, and, and my results started to, to fade a little bit and drop a little bit because I was you know, a little distracted. Like I said, becoming a great tennis player and performing well, you need to have balance. You need to have balance in your personal life and your social life and in every other aspect of your life in order to perform the best on court. And, and when that balance was thrown off for me a little bit, my, my game started to suffer. Um, but anyway, getting to know all the coaches in the recruiting process was, um, you know, was incredible because you really connect with them and get to know them on a real personal level through the process. And, and there were just so many great schools and so many great programs. And, and really my, my, uh, my love for what Coach, Coach Ramsey Smith does at Duke and the way he runs his program you know, determine my decision. I'm going to stay on this subject a little bit. Why Duke over Notre Dame? What, what was the difference? Yeah, well, I think just the opportunity Duke presented for me and, and the people, the student body at Duke was, was so incredible. And they were, you know, they're, they're such incredible people. Everyone there is in the top of their class and, and you know, high-level performing students. And the same with the athletes. It's, it's, you know, some of the best players in, in their sport in the country. And I just think that, that you know, the, let's just call it the, the student body, you know, of greatness. Everyone's, everyone's so great and, and so, you know, they, they, they all have incredible aspirations. And I think that <clears throat> was one thing that drew me to the university, among other things. Like I said, the program that Coach Smith runs and the direction that the, the, the team was heading was something I wanted to be a part of. And I think another thing for an athlete that's so important when, when choosing a school is, is how do you get along with the players on the team? And I meshed right in with the players on the Duke team, and they were extremely welcoming and, you know, sending me messages along the way, hey, how you doing, checking up, and making sure I was, you know, they wanted me to choose Duke, obviously, but making sure I was, you know, doing well and, and everything. So that's something that really really drew my attention from the beginning was how I, how, how much I liked the, the team members and, and also the support Duke has for the student athletes. I think they have one of the highest graduation rates and, and one of the highest performing student athletes in terms of academics. So the support there was tremendous, and that's something I felt really great about. Hey, tell me five good things about Duke University people would like to know. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. For me, uh, like I said, the student body would be one, and number two for me would be the weather because as a tennis player, you know, playing indoors versus outdoors is a, is a unique dynamic, and it's something that was extremely important to me when choosing my, my college. So I wanted to play mostly outdoors because that resembles, you know, kind of professional circuit is, is 90% outdoors, 10% indoors. So that was something that was really important in my decision-making. Uh, number three, obviously, for any, for any student athlete, uh, for that matter, the coach is, is one of the biggest decisions when making a school is how do you get along with the coach, what's his coaching style, can he make you a better player? Because the coach is going to be one of the people you spend almost all your time with. So that was, uh, you know, obviously extremely important in my decision-making process. And then number four is financially. Um, you know, for some people that's an extremely important decision when making 
you know, choosing which, which college they're going to go to. And then number five, the academic opportunities to, to present, you know, and it's a liberal arts college. So you can kind of, you know, choose your majors and, and take different classes from many fields. And that's something I was drawn to. Uh, I thought I said five, but I'll give you one more. The, the, the fifth would be the conference. You know, the level, the level of, the level of competition in the ACC was, was something that was extremely important to me, making sure I'm playing you know, the best competition each week, which the ACC does. You know, so many great schools next to Duke in the region. You have North Carolina, Wake Forest, NC State. You know, so just the competition in the ACC, especially for tennis, was, was one of the best out of all the conferences. Great. Jake, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> if you're just joining us, this is Jake Krug, my interview today regarding uh, tennis on Tennis Tour ITF uh, International Tennis Federation level. Jake has been the highlight today on Secure Radio. Millions of listeners, this, the interview is going to stay in archive forever. Jake, let's talk about uh, today. I remember when we were growing up, we didn't have a cell phone. We didn't have iPad, we didn't have uh, uh, Instagram, we didn't have, uh, what else I'm missing? We didn't have a Twitter, we didn't have, uh, now you have this uh, video named TikTok, we didn't have, uh, what else I'm missing, Jake? Help me out. Um, Facebook, uh, you got um, Facebook, Snapchat. Uh, Secret Radio, today our great guest is uh, Jake Krug. Jake Krug is... Um, University of Duke bound, full scholarship, 170 in the world, 12 national. Jake, we were talking about social media. Uh, the question was how you balance your life of a high level athlete, tennis player, with uh, social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, uh, you name it. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, it, it's definitely, and amongst all tennis players, it can definitely be, you know, a distraction. And, and not just social media, the Internet, um, and in all its aspects, for that matter, because there's so many ranking systems now, for instance, on the Internet, with, uh, you know, you have the, IT, the ITF ranking system, the USTA, UTR, tennis recruiting. There's so many things on the Internet that can get you distracted and and, you know, take your mind off what the main purpose and the main goal is, and that's to become the best player you can be. And in order to do that, you need to have a clear mind and you need to be, you need to be extremely focused on, on what your tasks are. So I think it's important, you know, to, to, to really stay off the phone a lot because so many people and so many kids, myself included, are on the phone way too much, and, and that, that can definitely play a, a, a huge role in, in your results and, and your tennis game because, like I said before, tennis is one of the sports that requires just – you know, a complete balance in terms of, you know, the social life, the, the personal life, and, and the tennis life in order to become the best player. So my advice to anyone who, who's looking to become a, a you know, high-level tennis player is to make sure that that balance is in check. Make sure you're not on the, on the phone too much. Make sure you're not looking at the rankings all the time. And, and to really trust the process of getting better because that's so important as a player. Great. Great answer. Um, let's talk about the benefit of the other sports, such as baseball, soccer, to your tennis, and then uh, I know you play board games. Just uh, tell our listener what are the advantage of these outside activities brought to your tennis. Yeah, so I mean, as a young kid, obviously playing these different sports allowed me to have pretty advanced motor skills. Um, I was very well rounded in the fact that, like I said, I played. I think like four or five different sports and, and, you know, basketball, for instance, helps with the conditioning and helps with the footwork, which is so crucial in tennis because starting at a young age, running up the court and, and moving your feet quickly. And I, luckily my family was incredibly supportive of me playing sports. And I have a, a grandfather who, who's extremely well-rounded in, in sports and who, who is, you know, extremely caring and, and, and wants to see me succeed. So at, at a young age, he was in the backyard working me out, um, on my basketball skills. And then, like I said, I played baseball, which you know, was a pitcher, which is extremely important because the serve and, and the pitching motion are, are very similar uh, in its mechanics. So I think playing, playing you know, many sports as a young kid has so many advantages, and just in the social aspect, too, because tennis is a very individualized sport in, in the sense where you know, it's very professional and it's very, it's very individualized, like I said. So you're not really 
um, interacting with with too many other kids. So, as a, at a social you know standpoint, I think it's extremely important for for the kid to to get involved in in many sports, team sports specifically, at a young age. Um, and it also helps with the transition to college because college tennis is is very unique in the sense that it is a team sport, and and a lot of kids haven't really been on a team and, and been in that scenario before, so it gives you a, a slight advantage going into that as well. Great. Great answer. Arguably the greatest player in the history of the game, yet he's so humble and he's he's you know, he's the epitome of class and he's everything that, that everyone should should inspire to be. And that's why he's done such a great job to inspire, you know, many to, to play the game and, and, you know, pursue tennis is because of the person he is. So I think becoming a being a good person and, and presenting yourself the right way as an athlete with, with such a big platform like these these professional players do is, is really crucial in, in you know developing the game and, and, and furthering the game of tennis and whatever sport it may be. That was good. Let's talk about Federer a little bit. Federer is a great uh, citizen of the world, and it's very nice of you to to mimic somebody like Federer. But um, um, tell us, what do you know about Federer? What do you what do you know about Federer? Tell us. Yeah, I mean, I've been fortunate enough. I, I actually met Roger, and I've watched him play many times in person at the U.S. Open, you know, when I went there every year, a couple of years ago as a young kid. But but I met him in 2012 um, at Wimbledon, and, and he always has times for his fans. He always makes times for the fans because, like I said, he knows that he has a responsibility to inspire the next generation of players because, you know, if th- there's always going to be another, another player. There's always going to be a number one. And no one else is, no one ever is bigger than the game. And I think Roger knows that and he uses his platform, you know, so, so greatly and so, so well in order to, to inspire kids and not only to become great tennis players, to become great people because that's more important and, and he's done so well at that. That's good. Jake, you're going to college. College is different. Mom is not going to be there. Dad's not going to be there. You're going to have to do your laundry, do everything on your own. You become an adult. Um, what? Um, how are you going to approach that? Look, I think that's the thing that, as an athlete and a tennis player in specific, that is, you know, will help with with the transition because it, it definitely is a big transition. One of the biggest transitions, you know, I'll make probably in my life and. You know, being having those skill sets, um, you know, being resilient and being tough, you know, going through everything that that the sport has and and that it's done to me will will make me, you know, a better person for it, and and therefore will make you know those transitions a little bit easier because I have the skills necessary to to deal with them. Because there will be adversity when you're when you're faced with with something challenging and and new like living on your own and and having to like you said make make decisions on your own now and there's no more mom and dad and you're you're essentially adult so. With that, there's going to be many challenges, and I feel that that tennis and sports in general help you become a, a better, well-rounded person and, and be able to deal with those challenges. Jake, you sound so good. You could go into politics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, tell me what subject uh, what subject you like the best. If you go to college, let's say, what would be your major, for example? Do you like philosophy? History, yeah, I'm not, geography, I'm not sure yet. Well, when you can take different classes in, in different fields and kind of, you know, see where your interests align and want to study. And, and right now at this moment, I really don't know. And that's because probably, you know, my ambitions with tennis, but, but I definitely like economics and I can see myself majoring in that. But at the moment, I, I really am not sure. All right. That's a, that's a good subject to study. If you were ahead of USDA or tennis, the ATP tour or ITF, what are the changes you will make for the game to get better? To be adjusted in, in terms.